Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So today, I wanted to go ahead and talk about testing methodology. This came up in my last video where I mentioned IPC a lot when referring to a GPU. Now, this isn't something that's talked about a lot. And like several other th topics that I've come up with on this channel, just going through doing certain videos, other things come to light. And this seems to be something that people don't look at when testing GPUs. If we go ahead and look at other reviews on other websites, basically all they're looking at is overall performance, performance per watt, and performance per dollar. Nobody actually tests the performance gain between generations, meaning new architecture changes like for like. And the reason why this is coming up is because on the Gamers Nexus, Vega Founders Edition, Frontier Edition, I keep doing that, I do it in pretty much every video. Regardless, we can clearly see that things don't make a lot of sense. The Fury X is beating the Vega FE. Now, of course, this is not RX Vega, and I know somebody's gonna go, well, this isn't representative of anything. What this is representative of is the architectural changes, because because there's nothing different. They're clocked at the same speed, and they have the exact same compute count. So really, the only difference between the two is a slight difference in memory speed, which in all honesty shouldn't make any difference. Otherwise, AMD should have went ahead and increased the memory speed on the uh, Frontier Edition, if that was a limiting factor. What it does show us is that there's little to no gain between the Vega FE and the RX Fury at this particular point. And as I was saying in that video, this is a point of concern. Now I've already spoken about why that's a point of concern because the numbers don't line up with productivity, but we're trying to move past that. The, my overarching point of this video is to say that nobody's looking into these changes. You know, if Vega comes out and it's just a little bit faster or even a lot faster, than the Fury X, that's great, but if it takes 1700 megahertz on the core to do that, and it's only, you know, 40 or 50% faster, nobody would look at the core for core performance. That's why I'm very thankful for Gamers Nexus for putting that up, as this is a piece of the testing methodology that is not being done by the media currently. This is something that I'm personally going to look into, and instead of calling it IPC, because that doesn't really relate, that's a CPU thing, instructions per clock, this is more like GPC. So I'm going to go ahead and try to coin that phrase and hopefully other reviewers will look at this and go, hey, maybe this is something that we should look at. So we can take a look at the differences between the architectural changes. This is the way that CPUs have been benchmarked since forever. Basically clock for clock to gauge how fast that they are next to each other. So for example, on the 7900X, they went ahead and clocked that bad boy at four gigahertz on Guru 3D and compared that to uh, all the Ryzen's and all the other Skylake and Cabby Lake CPUs out there to see how it compares clock for clock. And that lets us know how efficient that architecture is. Now this isn't done on GPUs for some unknown reason. Now somebody's going to argue, hey, well they have different architectures, they're meant to do different, they do the same calculations, okay? They go about it a little bit different. Ryzen has a different cache architecture than Skylake X. Skylake X has a different cache architecture than Skylake. I mean, they're all different. That's not a reason for them not to be tested identically. You're looking for efficiency on power draw and how many calculations, how well the GPU or CPU can perform at the exact same speed when all other factors are taken out. And that's the only way to test the architecture. For example, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up similar GPUs between Kepler Maxwell and Pascal. That's another thing. We always mention that Pascal is just Maxwell, uh, you know, just shrunk down with a few tweaks. This is because Adore TV clocked a Maxwell GPU with similar uh, shader count compared to that of a Pascal and clocked the speeds virtually identically. And we noticed that there was almost no performance difference. Now, nobody else has really done this. This isn't something that I've seen on the internet anywhere else. And this is important to me. Now, this is a reoccurring thing that I've been talking about and not been able to clarify it properly to you guys. And I do apologize about that. Sometimes my brain starts working and I start getting off track and I'm not saying things very clearly to you. And I do apologize. But because we're not testing the generational differences between architectures, we don't really know if the GPUs are actually advancing. Now, with a die shrink and greater clock speeds, that's always awesome and lower TDP, that's, that's great too. But are the GPUs actually advancing? 
this is something, like I said, nobody's really testing. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look into that. Like I said, I'm gonna coin the phrase uh, GPC for graphics per clock, because you know, you have polygons, triangle, you know, your triangles, you have pixels, you have shaders, you have so many different pieces of graphics that are being pumped out per clock that just using the term graphics in general kind of smooshes all of that over. So I think that that's a pretty interesting piece of the review process that we're not doing. We are getting performance per watt now, which is great. We are getting frame times now, which is great. We are getting performance per dollar, which is also great. And we're getting overall performance, but we are not looking at generational improvements. And this is something that's mostly important for Vega. And that's probably why, you know, it's coming up a lot right now, because if the performance in their architecture in the NCU architecture is not significantly greater than that in their GCN architecture, Maxwell has always been significantly faster all the way back, way back when in 2014, when Maxwell came out, they were significantly ahead of any architecture that AMD had. Now, fast forward to 2017, if AMD cannot compete with a 2014 architecture from NVIDIA, that says more to me than the overall performance of Vega, because that will dictate where AMD really is in this whole ball game, you know, what level that they're actually at. So I'm going to go ahead and start that out. I'm probably going to start with Pascal versus uh, Maxwell because this is something that's brought up a lot. And I know Adored went ahead and showed it, but I want to go ahead and confirm this myself. I'm going to go ahead and match up the GTX uh, 1050 Ti and the GTX 950. Now the tricky part is, is getting them at the exact same clock speeds because of GPU boost. I may have to go ahead and uh, you know use custom BIOS and disable GPU boost because we need them at the exact same clock speeds and see how they perform relative to each other. Now these GPU tests, I've already thought of this, are not going to be run at super high settings. They're not going to be trying to stress out the graphics card in that respect. Higher resolutions are good because we want to take the load off the CPU, but some of these older architectures and GPUs, for example, Kepler, a lot of those only have two gigabytes. So we'll probably be testing with medium settings, things that will lower CPU load, but will overload the GPU with using, you know, uh, higher resolutions. And assuming whatever the frame rate difference is overall after a multiple game test suite, we can kind of gauge overall performance from generation to generation. Kepler with the GTX 650 Ti, has the same 60, uh, 768 CUDA cores as the Maxwell GTX 950. So are they different? We, both, we all know that they don't perform the same. The 950 is much faster, but clock for clock, how much faster is it? I don't know. Nobody, nobody has the information out there. That's kind of my point. This is information we don't really know. How much faster was Maxwell really over Kepler? How much faster was Maxwell over GCN generation one or two? I don't know. I mean, there might be information out there. I may just not have been able to find it, but I couldn't find it out there. Uh, and to me, this is interesting because I like to see where each company is. If, for example, let's say Vega comes out and Nvidia still has a 25, 30% you know, uh, architectural lead. That's really the best way to put it. Their architecture is 20 or 30% more efficient. That's a pretty big hurdle, especially considering we're talking about in theory, we don't really know if Maxwell and Pascal is exactly the same. Like I said, we've seen one video where I have. I will test this out myself, and then I will compile almost like a chart of where the generations, um, the different GPU architectures, how they relate to each other, where they stack up, like GCN 1 versus, let's say, Pascal, or GCN 2 or 3 uh, versus GCN 4. You know, maybe there's significant differences even within GCN, which is essentially the same architecture, just, re you know, revised. Basically what they did with Pascal. Are there any differences? I, I don't know. I mean, we do see lower uh, power consumption, and that's important, but is there any performance gain per core, per clock? Like I said, this is interesting stuff to me, so I'm excited. If you guys like this kind of video, please hit that like button. And if you really want to help me out, there's a lot of hardware I'm going to need to get. Luckily, you don't need to use super high-end stuff. But for one-to-one -one comparison, some of it is a little bit more high-end on the hardware side. So if you guys want to help out, please consider becoming a patron. That would really help me get this hardware on hands quicker so I can get these videos out to you. I'm super interested to see how these architectures compare. And I'm thinking about even going back to TerraScale and uh, Fermi and just seeing how those compare to modern architectures clock for clock. 
To me, that's pretty interesting stuff. It's going to be really hard on the NVIDIA side because on AMD, with Wattman at least, you can clock really low and it, it'll work. Uh, you know, using Afterburner for NVIDIA, it's going to be tough getting some of these Pascal cards that like to run super, super fast down to like eight, 900 megahertz uh, to compete with like a Fermi card. That's going to be pretty interesting. So if you guys have any suggestions on that, please let me know. Maybe there's a better way to do it. Uh, so we're going for massive underclocking on basically modern cards. So this way we can compare them to old cards. This is really interesting to me, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I will catch you guys in the next video.